Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. This is a Let's Play by Scope, and I am the fat man speaking in case you haven't guessed that. But uh, my mouth isn't moving, for reasons I cannot explain. But uh, yeah. Anyways, welcome back guys, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. In the last episode we defeated the Meadow Shrine, in my opinion one of the harder shines in the game. So, you know, harder shines? Did I just say harder shines? Wow. Super Mario Sunshine's over, and here I am still saying that. One of the hardest shrines in the game. I probably said that like four times in that LP. Anyway, hardest shrines in the game, in my opinion. So now let's move on to a easier one. Mountain Shrine can be difficult, so I... But you know what? I think... I remember last episode I said only Jono gives off. Jono 2 gives off the Red-Eyes Black Dragon, but I think it might be possible to win it from the High Mage here. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. That is debatable. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? But screw it. We're just going to go to the Sea Shrine plate safe. I think... I'm not sure if Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon... Uh, he's Thunder-type, so I'm pretty sure he gains up. Thunder-type monsters gain the battle advantage on the water field, which is obviously what this place is going to be. So all these low mages, they look pretty much the same as, you know, their... Each counterparts. They just... like This guy's got, you know, more slant, more linear eyes, as you can tell. More chinky eyes. You're finally here. I'm afraid I can't let you enter the Sea Shrine. It is our duty to protect the Millennium Items, the source of our mystic power. The Sea Shrine will be your place of eternal rest. You know, I'm surprised, like, Yugi or Atem or Scope, whatever our name is, we couldn't just sneak around the back of the shrine. Like, this guy, this, this, this is one guy guarding this shrine. Like, why couldn't we walk around the back up there by the trees and just sneak around this dude? Prepare to lose. Like, I don't get that. I mean, is it... Is it... You know, was that not invented at this point? Is it too honorable to... Or too dishonorable to, you know, sneak around the back? I don't know. Like that movie, The Invention of Lying. I guess lying wasn't invented at this point. So anyways, we haven't seen this yet in the game. This is the water field, or C. Uh, you can use this. You can turn it to this by making getting the Umi card. Fun fact is, in my last playthrough, uh, out of this game, my deck was actually based around a C deck. So I had the Umi card, and I was in extreme use of it. A lot of decks I've used in real life too when I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! were based around uh, water and sea type monsters because you know I just love water. That's true. I just love the ocean and everything about it so I've always appealed to water monsters. You can call me Mako Tsunami if you please. But anyways this guy shouldn't be too strong. Um, you know Skull Knight should be good and uh, a general rule when fighting got people that use water type monsters like these two mages and uh, Isis or Shizu they tend to use water monsters, which a lot of those have the Guardian Star of Neptune. A lot of them don't, but... So, a general rule is if you have a monster with Pluto, set it to Pluto, because Pluto defeats Neptune. Chances are you will be effective against them. So, Firewing Pegasus is a fire-type monster. Oddly enough, he's not powered down by this field, which is interesting. I don't. Then now, now that I come to think of it, I don't know if any monsters are powered down by these fields. Our fields power down monsters, period. Alright, so we got a boulder tortoise here with 2700 attack. 50, just 50 too much for Skull Knight to take out, which is bullshit. Bull hell. Oh, what are you gonna set down? Is that a magic or a trap? Oh, it's a magic. Good. I'm not afraid then. Alright, so what does that guy have? Uranus. So we need somebody with Saturn. Um, Paradragon does have Saturn, but he would only boost up to 2500 attack, and that is. Oh, you do get powered down, because look, Vermilion Sparrow is Pyrotype, which is what that sign means, and he is powered down. Holy shit. Yeah, I guess, I don't know why I didn't remember that. Alright, so we can get rid of some of these monsters. We don't need all these dragons, so... Let's get rid of all these guys. All these guys are going to be useless. And I'll just throw a pair of dragon out there, just because he has Saturn, so why not? And let's just see that beautiful, yeah, yellow lines. Great. Doesn't, doesn't do anything. I should turn one of these guys into defense mode to lure this guy into attacking. That way I can kill him. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll risk a Paradragon. Let's see if he goes for it. Let's see that! No, you're not doing that again. You do that like every time you see, let's see. Ooh, man-eating Black Shark, eh? Nicely done. Oh, but you left Boulder Tortoise in defense mode, you puss. Alright, what can we do here? We can do, ooh, let's do Thousand Dragon with a thousand extra attack for 3400 attack. I could have just equipped both those bright castles to Skull Knight and gave him 3650 attack. 
but I'd rather have a 34 and a, you know, 26 than a 36 just straight. 36 and a 24. You know what? Doesn't even. It's really not that big of a difference. Don't listen to my rambling. It's honestly not important. Um. All right, so let's use Skull Knight to take out this man-eating black shark, man-eating black fuck, and then uh, half thousand dragon annihilate the boulder tortoise. Yay! And now, uh, what's your face? Pair Dragon, you can resume attack mode and chomp into those life points. Just nom nom those life points, dude. You know what to do. Yeah, we're definitely not going to get an S rank on this dude. Although I'm sure in Friedel we'd be able to without his stupid water advantage. Even with his water advantage, this guy is shit. I mean, these low mages are nothing now. I don't think I'll... I hope I won't even lose to one the whole rest of the game. There's no reason I should. Unless they, you know, get, like, ridiculously lucky. What do you got there, 2600 attack? Well, how do you feel about being defeated by only 50 extra points? Just being nudged over just by that little bit, because I know it makes me feel like crap. I need to do some more 3D battles. I'm sorry, guys. I've just been forgetting that. I forgot the whole first half of the LP that it even existed. I mean, I knew it existed. I just forgot to show it, but I need to get better with that is the bottom line. And we win. What do we get? Turtle Tiger. Shit card. Absolute shit card. This guy's not that good for grinding. He doesn't get off, give off too many good cards, except for, like, maybe Roaring Ocean Snake, which only has 2,100 attack. No. It cannot be. You weren't meant to win. Sekmaton. Forgive me. And in case you don't... Never played this game before. Sekmaton is actually the high mage here. And I believe he is the, supposed to be, um, chronologically, the first one you're supposed to face here. And this guy, let's let's give this guy the lowdown on looks. You know, like, G California on looks. Egypt on looks. He's got, uh, okay, he's got little tigers for his shoulder blades, and it looks like he's wearing some robe that slightly resembles his beard, which is weird. And then he's got this huge tiger, you know, helmet, which is cool because it reminds me of that movie Gladiator. All those spikes aren't necessary. And, uh, I don't know, the top of his head is just really dark and he blinks a lot. I am High Mage Sekmaton. Since time immemorial, it has been our duty to protect the Millennium Items. Time immemorial? Dude, it hasn't been that long. I was just here like, you know, five, ten episodes ago, bro. I just stopped into a tournament real quick. And we shall never allow them to fall into your hands. And wait, no, it's not It's not time immemorial, because Jono and Teana are still alive. So I know it hasn't been that long. So t don't pretend like you don't remember. I mean, come on. Prepare to face my seat and prepare to meet your doom. You shall pay dearly for your folly. <laughs> I do like this guy's vocabulary, though. Folly and time and more immemorial. Yeah, so there's Turtle Tiger. Pretty crap. Just a basic card. Anyway, Sekmaton is pretty powerful here. Thankfully, there are no real water monsters that are, like, super powerful in this game. Like, you know, Gate Guardian status. That he can benefit from the field too much. So he's just going to have generally strong cards. But uh, nothing too overpowered. So that is good. Kaminari Attack is Thunder. So he does benefit from this. But what's even better is Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon benefits from this field, so he's going to have an initial 3,300 attack. Throw a Bright Castle on him, and you've got 3,800 attack. Not to mention, we have another Bright Castle and a Dragon Treasure we can equip to him later to give him 4,800 possible fucking attack in this bitch. That will kill anything this guy can, will, want to, or even dream of attacking us with. What do you got? Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think so, motherfucker. Did I give you Pluto or Moon? Dude, why the fuck did you give him Moon? You are... You are... This is a good burger. <laughs> okay, that reference didn't even make sense. I just... he In the movie, he says it with that, you know, exact tone. This is a good burger. I said... Whatever I said. So, yeah. He's gonna throw out a Neptune. Oh, Crab Turtle. Yeah, that's a ritual monster. Ritual monsters in this game, it does still work. You can get ritual cards by S-teching sometimes. And uh, how it works is it's just gonna ask for three random monsters. And you have to have them on the field. Activate the ritual card, and that monster will be summoned. Simple as that. Um really hard to pull off and it's a lot of the ritual cards are even impossible to get in the American version so don't worry your pretty little heads about it and look at this we've got fucking dude how many times have you said the F word in this episode already seriously calm down look at that we've already got three twin headed thunder dragon we've got three monsters with over 3,300 attack dude maybe we should get it we need to get an umi card oh look at that a dark magician cool we need to get an umi card because look at how overpowered we would be right now and just like that, we defeated High Mage Sekmaton. So much for that guy. What a D-bag, right? Yeah, I'd say he's... If I were to, um, you know, order these guys, I would say Sekmaton is the easiest by far. Because there's no real super powerful... Ancient Tool, I don't know. We S-powed him, though. That was good. Not sure what that is. 
Oh, now we can see his eyebrows. He's all pissed now. You are powerful. But you don't stand a chance against the power of Master Hai Shin. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. And we get the Millennium Necklace he was guarding. We now have three of the Millennium Items. We got the Necklace. We got the Eye. We got the Puzzle. Yeah! That only leaves four remaining. And I believe Hai Shin is in possession of the Rod itself. So I believe that's only three left that are guarding the Shrines. Yes, we've got the Mountain Shrine. We have got the Forest Shrine and the Desert Shrine. I believe that is all of them. Yes, because that's the King's Valley. And that's the Shrine of Glory, which has no significance. Trust me, there's nothing hidden there. Um, so what you want to do is, once you have defeated two or three shrines, before moving on and clearing out the rest of the shrines, we, you want to, um, there's a certain story event that's accessible here in town. First things first, I'm going to save. A story event that's here in town, and this is how you access one of the characters to unlock in Friedel that you normally wouldn't have access to. A lot of people miss this their first time through the game. I know I missed it at least my first ten times through the game. And uh, I haven't had many more places than that. So let's leave the shop. And now I believe we want to go back in. And I believe we want to go to the dueling grounds and some storyline crap should pop up. What can you do for me? You can take me to the dueling grounds, dude. And Jono. Scope, we got some trouble. Uh-huh. So once you've defeated two or three shrines, I believe that's all you have to do. Come here and this storyline event will trigger. If you've defeated more than that, you will miss this part completely. Especially if you've defeated them all. And if you've only defeated one, I believe it also doesn't trigger too. So... What's up, Jono? Seto and the mages came here while I was gone. They took off with Teana. They watch you, Scope. They figured they could drag you out with Teana as bait. Come on, Scope, let's go to the shrine and rescue Teana. Yeah, so this is kind of premature. You're like, holy crap. I mean, they kidnapped Teana already, and now we're going to the vast shrine, you know, Haishin's lair? This is it. This place giving me the creeps. To be honest, I don't really like being here. Seeing how there's no mage around to stop us, we can assume they're waiting for us. Yeah, so now there's no mage at the front gate. We can just walk right in. Come on, let's go. I do feel better with Jono at my side, though. That, that makes me extremely happy. Oh, what's this? It gives me great pleasure to welcome you. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you, Fuse, to your own funeral. Scram, we got bigger fish to fry. Okay, so we're going to get sent into a... Ooh, so this is the ancient tool, huh? Man, that does look like a tool bagel. Anyways, we're sent into a premature battle here with the Labyrinth Mage. Um, this guy you're not supposed to duel till a lot later in the game, so he has super powerful cards. I do urge you to be careful here, um, because this guy will kick your ass if you're not ready. So, um, looks like we got some pretty good draws here, so we should be okay. Let's see what we can do here. A twin-headed thunder dragon should be able to hold up against this dupe. Yeah, so this guy is pretty much the equivalent of para or dox or paradox in the anime so can, you can best hear, you can best believe he does have the uh, gate guardian card and I'm pretty sure he just has the three pieces of the gate guardian too which is Sangha of Thunder, uh, Kazijin, and Suijin. So let's summon Gaia the Fierce Nightshare. He's the strongest dude we got in our deck right now. Or not in our deck but in our hand. And what is that Pluto? Um, I'll attack with this just to be safe. Oh it was the Sangha of Thunder. Speak it of the devil. Cool. Alright, guy, you best attack those life points, boy, because we know you're going to die next turn. He's going to summon somebody that can kill you. I think he's got three of each of the uh, parts. Oh, it's going to be Suijin. Yeah, I knew it. I could tell because it was Neptune. Trust me, this guy's so predictable. Funny story is, uh, when I was a kid, actually, and I was really into Yu-Gi-Oh!, I had the two pieces of Gate Guardian, and I was just obsessed with him at one point, um, getting all the pieces of the Gate Guardian cards for my collection. And I had the Song of Thunder, and I bought Kazuyujin for, like, $15 at the store, which was a lot back then because I was a kid and I didn't have any money. Um, point is, though, so I bought it and all I needed was the Suijin card, and then this kid I knew in my summer camp had the Suijin card, and uh, one time we were on a field trip, and he left his deck, like, laying around while we were at Weber Point, I believe, which is a like a water park, and uh, what I did is I took his Suijin card, I know I was a little dick, don't, don't judge me, I was like 10 years old, so I stole it and I put it in my shoe, because I figured if I put it in my pocket or something, they might check. So I put it in my shoe. And mind you, we were at a water park. And I still went around and played in the water and shit after that. And then, um, of course, he checked through his deck for some reason. And he figured out his card was missing. And everybody was in panic. And I was just playing along. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe you lost your car. Blah, blah, blah. But then at the end of the day, you know, I was nobody was none smarter. He just thought he lost it. And uh, what I did is I went home, checked my shoe. And, of course, the card was bent to high hell. 
it was uh, water damaged and everything. But it was still visibly the Suijin card. It wasn't in too bad a shape. And I actually kept that in my collection. I, believe it or not, never got a legitimate Suijin card myself. So I actually kept that in my collection, and I think I still have that card somewhere. And it's pretty fucking hilarious because I never even got that card after. I, I mean, it was a dick move. I shouldn't have stole it, obviously, but I was young and naive. So, you know, but... Hey, whatever. I can't even hear this music. Is this music any... Is this different music? Okay, no, this is the same battle music as before. I thought we had some, like, new music here. I was about to flip out. But anyway, yeah, that's an interesting story for you. I was a little fucking thief. Well, I wasn't a thief. I was just motivated, okay? I wanted that Suijin card really bad. Like, you guys don't understand how bad I wanted that card. Alright, yeah, he's gonna have a lot of Labyrinth monsters, too, like Labyrinth Tank. Um, this guy, I believe, is the only guy in the game you can win the parts of Gay Guardian from if you want to win them for whatever reason. I mean, they're strong standalone cards, so there's that. And I believe you can also win. This is the only guy you can win Labyrinth Tank from. Actually, you might be able to win from Seto, I'm not sure. Ooh, we got an S Power Ranking on him. Binding Chain. I think that's a good card. I think that's a Magic or Trap card. Anyways, we beat the guy. You cannot hope to survive this labyrinth. Look, ignore this guy. Let's move on. Alright, so this is a labyrinth. We're going to have a few series of passages here. And there is only one correct way to go through this labyrinth. If you get lost, I believe you return back at the beginning. And you have to fight the labyrinth mage again. So you don't want to mess this up. So here is what the solution is. Oh, anyway, sorry guys. So, whoa, holy crap, just done dropped my controller. What do you know? So, the right way to go through this maze is you want to go right. I can't take much more of this. Jo Jono, we just went through one door, bro. Stop tripping. Okay, and then you go right again. Oh, which way now? Oh, well, Jono, I'm glad you asked. We go left now. Every place looks the same. Where are we anyway? And now we go right. So, the correct way to go through that maze is right, right, left, right. If you do anything else, you'll end up back at the beginning. I think we finally made it. Let's go. And what have we got here? Oh my god, it's Hai Shin and... Oh, dude, we're at Hai Shin already, and there's Seto and Tayana. So, you've come at last. Dude, are we about to do the final battle of the game right now? We, only, we don't even have all the Millennium items. We're here for Tayana. Hmm, I never dreamed the prince would be alive. There is much to be said of the Millennium Puzzle's power. Actually, I should thank my lucky stars that the puzzle still exists for me to take. Seto, destroy the prince. Defeat him and I will make you guardian of the puzzle. I thank you, my lord. Leave his life in my hands. That I shall. He is all yours. I will meet you back at the Dark Shrine. And so for whatever reason here, they pretty much could just take us here right now and own us. But for some reason, Haishin leaves and heads back to his Dark Shrine. And Seto and Tayana are left here to take care of us. My, my, I'm surprised that you passed the trials of the Labyrinth. Are you kidding? We could have done it with both hands tied behind our backs. <laughs> is that the best? Is that the best you can do? Wrong voice for the loss. Ah, the hostage. You can have her back. Screw the hostage. I have money. Scope. I've been waiting for this chance to face you once again. There is no joy in simply trading the hostage for your item. The joy is in the battle, Scope. So pretty much what Seto's saying is he gave her back. He only wanted to lure us here to battle us. For some reason, he just wants to battle us for the joy of it. I don't know. So, anyways, this guy we're about to battle now is Seto 2, and this is the only way you can duel him. Oh no, this is a monster? Ugh, crap. That's actually... Funny thing is, that's actually a magic card in the game, I believe. Oh no, it's not. I'm thinking of a different card. Anyway, this is the only way you can duel Seto 2. Um, when we get all the Millennium Items and come here, there's going to be a similar storyline event. But it will ultimately lead to fighting Seto 3, and you'll skip Seto 2. So this is the only way to duel him. He doesn't give any, like, significantly better cards. Like, cards that are rare or worth it. But I want to unlock him anyway, because there might be some I'm, like, overlooking or anything. Something like that. So, uh, let's go for a... You know what? No, because we can equip Skull Knight with this. So I'm going to go with this. We could have made the Thunder Dragon and equipped him with Bright Castle, but he can't take this. So... Instead of 3300 attack, we now have 3650. And I'm pretty sure Seto has some blue eyes white dragons here. And I'm sure he's also got some really good cards that the mages would have. Ooh, he left it in attack mode. That is not good. That scares the living balls out of me. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to set the field to Yami 
just to power up Skull Knight a little bit more, because I am indeed scared. 4150, let's see you beat that, bitch. Oh, Black Luster Soldier, well that's not that bad. I mean, it's an intimidating card, because it's Black Luster Soldier, yeah, but he's only got 3,000 attacks, same attack power as a Blue Eyes White Dragon. And if you think about it in that respect, he's not that bad. Alright, so let's go for a Twin-Headed Thunder, THTD up in here. Alright, let's see if you can take care of this guy. Oh, what do you know? You just killed yourself, man. You just fought yourself. I think you can win Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, uh, the individual card, the standalone card from Seto 2 here. Not too sure. We can experiment with him in Free Duel in our uh, last grinding session, maybe. Maybe. Ooh, and look, Dark Magician is powered up from the field. 3,000 attack. Equal of a Blue Eyes, actually. Well, Blue Eyes only has 2,500 defense, so better than a Blue Eyes. Ugh. Sucker. Let me guess another one. Oh no, a Song of Thunder. Well, yeah, Seto's cards aren't too great. They're obviously a lot better than the first time we fought him from the first to the second time, but we still kicked his ass. And that's good, too, because you don't want to have to go through all that labyrinth crap again if you get a game over here. And we get Guardian of the Sea, which I think is not that good of a card, but oh well. We unlocked Seto 2 and Friedel and got some unique story dialogue here. <laughs> it's funny, too, because he looks so excited here. If you lose to him, like, as Seto 1 or even here, this is the same face he has when he wins. Like, he's so happy. Not bad, not bad at all. At this rate, I doubt that the mages will be able to stop you. You win. Take the card and the girl. Till we meet again. So, you know, you kind of know how Seto was talking all that stuff about helping us earlier, and now he's all excited that we won and he gave us Teana back just like that. I don't know. It's very possible that Seto could be on our side at this point. Teana, are you okay? Uh, yeah, thanks, Scope. You too, Jono. You know, friendship can help me get through this hard time. Shut up. Look, I've had enough of this place. Let's get out of here. Right, now, um, normally in... Oh, never mind, I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah, there is something strange about him, Jono. Yeah, he didn't really want to beat me. That's right. Yeah, he does have a different agenda. I know what you mean. Listen, Scope, you be careful around that guy. He's dangerous. That's what everybody keeps telling me, but I don't know. He's kind of a pussy. <laughs> Dude, don't say that. Anyways, guys, I believe that is more than enough for this episode. We dueled Seto 2, which is a you know, unique enough experience in of itself. So what I'm going to do is save, and then in the next episode, we will continue facing the shrines. We've only got three more remaining, I believe. Yeah. We've got uh, mountain, forest, and desert. So in the next episode, that's what we're going to be doing. Taking on the shrines, try to get the rest of the Millennium items. And then we're heading towards the end of the game, folks. It's not that, I'd say maybe five more episodes max if you include like a grinding episode or something. I don't know, guys. It's just oh, it's so sad. I don't even... I, this game is not going to end ever. We're going to extend it as far as we can. We'll do 100 grinding episodes if we have to. I don't even care. I can do what I want. It's my LP. You can't stop me. Anyways, guys, that's it for here now. We are done with this episode. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. I bid you adieu.